Greetings. Uh, let us learn about cyanoacrylate glue injection. Uh, this is uh, commonly used to manage patients with gastric varices, especially in the fundus, either isolated varices, isolated fundic varices, or fundic varices in association with esophageal varices. One of the most important things as a technician uh, to prepare for variceal injection, especially glue injection, is to make sure not to forget wearing eye protection. And if the glue gets into the eye, it is a mess. So as part of this, not only the endoscopist, the technician, the nurse, and everybody in the room should wear eye protection, but also the patient's face should be covered to prevent uh, any splashes into the patient's eyes or into any of the team members' eyes. So that is a very important principle. Uh, as such, for every endoscopy procedure, irrespective of whether we use glue or not, a full PPE is a must. But in this case, if you don't wear the PPE, you pay a big price. So now let us look at the glue. So when you prepare for the glue injection, you need to take uh, quite a bit of uh, glue. Uh, this is uh, cyanoacrylate glue. And you take uh, 0.5 ml of glue in each of the 10 syringes because Fundic variceal injection requires a lot of glue. You want to be ready with all the material. And then you need distal water and uh, uh, three cc's of distal water per syringe. Again, at least 10 syringes to be ready. And you need an injection catheter. So these are the things that one needs to prepare on the back table for glue injection. Glue can be sticky. It can damage the scope. So it can plug the scope channel. In order to prevent that glue sticking to the scope or to the scope channel, one should use a specialized oil and coat the endoscope and the channel uh, with the oil uh, so that if in case there were to be accidental uh, spillage of glue onto the scope or into the channel, uh, it prevents the scope damage. The oil does not allow the glue to stick into the scope channel or onto the scope. Although I mentioned this, I would like to make uh, this as an important point to wear full PPE and also protect the patient's face and eyes to prevent spillage of glue and avoid unnecessary issues. When it comes to glue injection, there are a few things. The glue tries to polymerize very fast. So there is a, a risk of embolization. So these two principles need to be kept in mind. And if you keep these two principles, what you need to do is you need to inject small amounts of glue, 0.5 ml of glue, and a 0.5 ml of glue goes only partly into the catheter, and then you flush with distal water very fast. And you should be ready with everything on the back table very close to you so that 
you could do this uh, injection pretty fast. So first step is uh, take the distal water syringe and prime the injection catheter with the distal water. And once the catheter is primed, uh, next, once the endoscopist uh, says uh, you get the glue, uh, 0.5 ml of glue, attach it to the injection catheter. When the endoscopist uh, says inject, you should inject quickly and then take the distal water and then inject the distal water quickly. So it's important to get the next glue ready and if the endoscopist says inject, you should actually inject very quickly followed by distal water. Typically for small fundic varices, injection volume of uh, 1.5 to 2 ml is sufficient of distal water injection. For a larger fundic varices, to disperse the glue in a bigger um, fundic varics, sometimes the endoscopist may ask you to inject 3 ml. The most important thing, whenever we're injecting, it is important to share what you're injecting and how much you're injecting. In the case of uh, glue, you say 0.5 ml of glue in, uh, following it with distal water, 1 ml injected, 2 ml injected, 3 ml injected, in that way. Get into that habit of sharing what you have done. Because glue is sticky, it can uh, make the needle get stuck in the varix. And one technique that is important that the endoscopist does is to prevent the needle from getting stuck by doing this jiggly motion uh, in and out as the injection is going on so as to prevent the needle from getting stuck. So these are the principles. Rapid injection, small amounts of injection, injection of glue followed by distal water injection. 0.5 ml of glue, 1 to 2 ml of distal water. For a bigger varix, maybe 3 ml uh, at the request of the endoscopist. Coming to the technique of glue injection, here is a large fundic varix. We all get tempted to go to the mound of the varix or the top of the hill. If you go to the top of the hill, you are likely to end up with bleeding. So the principle is to start at the bottom of the hill, that is the periphery of the uh, fundic varix, close to the wall, inject first there, and then walk your way up to the top of the hill and inject. And as you're injecting, uh, you should jiggle the needle to prevent the needle from getting stuck. In glue injection, the most important thing is to prepare, prepare in advance small amounts of glue, several syringes, 0.5 ml of glue, and uh, 3 ml of distal water per syringe, again, several syringes, at least 10 syringes, and have them ready. And as the injection is happening, the assistant uh, should communicate what is happening and the endoscopist starts injection of the glue from the bottom of the hill, that is closer to the gastric wall, and then inches up close to the top of the mound or the top of the hill. And uh, that uh, prevents unnecessary bleeding and complications. Uh, this is what I've learned from a beautiful article uh, written by uh, Dr. Desai uh, from India. Uh, he has uh, use this technique for over 2,000 patients, maybe closer to 3,000 patients, and he felt that this technique has been very useful in managing fundic varices and also managing them with, without major bleeding and without uh, uh, issues of uh, embolization, 
We're going to talk about embolization later. When it comes to glue, uh, although uh, glue is, uh, is used for gastric variceal bleeding, sometimes glue has been uh, used to treat uh, fistulas and anastomotic leaks. Uh, when you think about fistulas, uh, Dr. Nibso Hendra, one of the famous endoscopists from Germany, has used glue injection uh, to close uh, pancreatic uh, fistulas and uh, bile duct fistulas. In terms of the risk, uh, one major risk that we all worry about is the pulmonary emboli embolization. And this tends to happen when we inject large amounts of glue and uh, uh, the large amounts of glue instead of 0.5 ml. And also this happens in patients who have large spleno-renal shunt. That means the gastric varices have a direct communication via the spleno-renal shunt to the inferior vena cava, up into the heart and into the lungs. So when there is a large spleno-renal shunt, uh, risk of embolization becomes much higher. Coming to the adverse events, uh, one risk is uh, obviously bleeding. Uh, when we try to inject uh, fundic varices, the bleeding risk is higher when we start injecting on the top of the hill or the top of the mound of the gastric varix. And this could be avoided by starting the injection closer to the periphery at the bottom of the hill and then going up as we inject the gastric varix. Another problem, when you don't uh, jiggle on the catheter in and out as the glue is being injected, the needle could get stuck in the varix and that could be a problem. If that happens, best thing is to give a tug so that the needle gets stuck in the varix and the catheter comes out and as the uh, glue solidifies and extrudes, the needle will just pass in the stool. If we don't take the precaution of uh, preparing the scope with uh, that special oil or silicone, um, then uh, if the glue gets uh, accidentally uh, larges, either on the scope or in the channel, it could lead to clogging of the endoscope and issues. If you don't take the precautions of protecting the eyes of the uh, team members and the patient, if a sl splash accidentally happens, it can cause severe damage to the eye. If it were to happen, the first thing is wash the eyes with copious amounts of water and then use methyl cellulose uh, drops, uh, the eye drops, or probably preferably get to see an ophthalmologist uh, to help manage that splash. I hope uh, this is useful. Uh, thank you.